must constantly look at things in a different way. The Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast was created by two physical therapists out of the desire to learn more about the different educational roles in physical therapy and healthcare and how healthcare education works by talking with educational leaders and people with different perspectives within physical therapy and across interdisciplinary lines on how education can be improved to disrupt the status quo of healthcare education. This is our journey, and thanks for listening. Hey, everybody. This is Brandon. And instead of this episode being an interview, I wanted to share an excerpt from a book that I've been reading to generate some discussion regarding DPT education. And I'd love to hear people's thoughts on what I'm about to read to generate some constructive discussions regarding this issue. Now, the excerpt that I'll be reading is from the book Fostering Creativity and Rehabilitation, which is edited and partially written by Dr. Matthew Taylor from the chapter Systemic Limits of Creativity from Academia or Professional Associations by Dr. Stefan Elgid, who is an Associate Professor of Physical Therapy at Nazareth College in Rochester, New York. Now, Matthew and Stefan will be coming on the show in the near future, so stay tuned in the coming months for more details. And of course, the link to the book will be in the podcast show notes for those who are interested. Now, without further ado, here is the excerpt from the book, Fostering Creativity and Rehabilitation. As we enter the post-normal times, We are moving towards uncertainty in so many areas and professions in society, including the rehabilitation professions. We will be working with more people that have chronic lifestyle disease, and the magic bullet will more than likely not be found. As rehabilitation professionals, we will then have to rely more on our creativity and insight in combination with our critical thinking, our knowledge of medicine, our colleagues and networks, and everything we learned during our entry-level and postgraduate level trainings. To develop our creativity, some of the limitations that are built into our formal education must be loosened up. Our basic rehabilitation training is phenomenal, but we are still training for normal times. The challenge is for the institutions and continuing education providers to add training for rehabilitation professionals who will be able to thrive in these post-normal times. Undoubtedly, to make space for this type of training, some of what is in the trainings now must be removed, or less emphasis must be placed on the quest for certainty in predictable outcomes and measures. We must be careful not to lose what is good with the system, but still prune some of the information that is not useful for today's and future rehabilitation professionals. I have no doubt that books like this and the work that the contributors to this book and very many like-minded rehabilitation professionals are doing right now, will make us succeed in providing professionals that will be ready for post-normal times. While the echoes will still be there, they will grow fainter over time, and the halls of academia will be filled with the vision of the embodied and enacted creative future instead of the echoes of the past. I am excited about the future and wish you well in making your own creative mark in rehabilitation. Thank you for attending class today, and we hope that you learned something and gained value from the content. If you'd like to schedule office hours with us, feel free to add us on Twitter at HET Podcast, on Instagram, HET Podcast, on Facebook, the Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast, and the homepage, Healthcare Education Transformation Podcast.com. And for those of you following along in the syllabus, Extra credit can be obtained by liking us, sharing us, and leaving a review. Let's continue our journey up Mount Educational Success as lifelong learners.